All right, a very special episode tonight of the Ohio Cash Podcast. I have the pioneer of Grand Valley State University wrestling and the resurgence of the Lakers, Dr. Philomena Mantella. Dr. Mantella is the president of Grand Valley State University, the fourth largest public university in the state of Michigan. Uh, Dr. Mantella, welcome to the show. Thanks, Ev. Great to see you again. Yeah, great to see you. Uh, in Wichita, we pa pa uh, crossed paths. Uh, as you know, my nephew Wyatt was an All-American for the Lakers this year, and uh, I'm pretty fired up. Uh, I was very fired up. I don't know. I'll have to send you a clip. Uh, I was very excited when uh, <laughs> Wyatt, Wyatt got a, he won a, a round of 12 match, and I know that you're very familiar with the sport, but Dr. Mantello, what is your background in the sport of wrestling? It goes, it's pretty deep and pretty, pretty extensive with your family, but what is your background in the sport of wrestling? Yeah, yeah, it is deep and it, it's broad, both. Uh, so I had two brothers that wrestled, uh, both uh, wrestled in high school and then in college at Temple University. My younger brother, Tony Mantella, um, went all the way to the finals, NCAA finals. He was the uh, was the one unranked guy in the finals. And so that was super exciting. Uh, lost, a, lost a close one. Of course, you remember every one of those matches, as you well know, in the sport of wrestling. Um, my husband and his whole family, six, six kids, three brothers, all wrestled. Um, he would have wrestled in college, but he got a full football scholarship to Syracuse University, and uh, they wouldn't let him do both sports at that time. And then we had three sons, and uh, we both love the sport. I mean, uh, you could find us Matt's side most any time, with or without kids. Uh, and uh, the three sons, uh, two of the three wrestled in college. They all wrestled in high school. Uh, one went to a university that did not host the sport, and uh, the other two wrestled in Division One and did really well. So... Uh, your brother was an NCAA finalist, and 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 it was crazy because Dave Schultz was in the finals that year. Yeah. Dave Schultz lost, but Mark Schultz won. The Panic <laughs> brothers might have been in the finals too. Bum, Bruce Baumgartner, which I know you're very familiar with, Bruce. Okay, so your youngest son is Vic Avery. Vic was third in uh, at 184 pounds. I want to say in 2014 or 2015 for the Edinburgh Fighting Scots. Correct. That's correct. 2015. 15. So the year they were third, the year they were third, uh, that's, I'm just going to put this up. It's never going to happen again. Um, it's probably never going to be a thing again for the mid-major schools, the old EWL and the, and the mid-American conference schools. It's probably just never going to happen again with the name, the day and age of the name and image likeness, but I'm going to, you know, get your spin on that and your, your, uh, take on that. But Vic highly successful, a big part of Edinburgh taking third and getting a team trophy in division one. And, um, they're the last mid major school to do that. Um, Cornell, obviously an outlier this year took uh, was runner up and they're in the Ivy league with no scholarships, but that's a real different beast. But why, why Vic going to Edinburgh and why, why, you know, sending to him, uh, to him to a wrestling school from, from new England, where you guys uh, raised him in Foxborough, Massachusetts. Yeah, it's a good question. You know, Vic had some offers. Um, he 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 did well his final year and coming into his final year, he was at all the national tournaments and he had some offers. I think Vic knew Vic and I think he wanted to be at a place where he could really concentrate on wrestling in school. And the other schools the other, really were large schools. They were, you know, there's probably a lot more choices, a lot more things going on. And he wanted to get serious about his training. So he knew that was kind of the place for him. It, it worked out well for him. Um, he had a great experience there. And, uh, you know, I think he made a good choice for himself. Uh, I think all, all our young people do that, right? They try to figure out, like, what's the magic formula for them to be successful in school and wrestling? So Vic goes, he takes third in the country at 184 at a, at a dynamite weight class. I was there covering it. I was probably did a couple interviews with him. I don't know if you uh, recognize my voice at all, but I did all of Vic's home matches for Flow Wrestling. I don't know. Do you remember that or not? Of course I remember that. Yeah, I remember your voice. I remember you. I remember that match. You know, it was a painful match lost by criteria. Gabe Dean, you know, in the uh, in the semifinals, uh, you, you know, you watch it, you, you study it and, uh, but two great wrestlers, a great match, a lot of energy for a 184. Um, yeah, it was really something. That's wild. I did all their home dual meets for, for like 10 years and 
Tim, Tim Flynn did more with less than any coach. And he's proving that now at, at WVU, do you still uh, stay connected with the coaches? Cliff Moore with, uh, you know, Port was one of his teammates. Shop was one of his teammates. Yeah. Was Vic's teammates. Um, obviously Tim Flynn, do you stay connected with people like that? Yeah, I, I do. And I try to, um, you know, support the sport um, and folks that are trying to build the program and, you know, it was funny because back when I used to watch Vic, I used to take um, take pictures all the time. I think part of it was keeping me sane and part of it was I wanted to capture the moment. It was so special. And I used to put them on Facebook. So everybody in wrestling is my Facebook friend. You know, I have like three professionals and a whole group of wrestlers. And so uh, we stay pretty connected. So you uh, are, have been in higher education for how long? now? Oh, geez, do I really have to tell you that? <laughs> Okay. You, you know, you, somebody told me I stop at 30 years, so I'm going to say 30 years, but no, it's been longer than that all my so, life. So uh, where did you start out? You said Pace University was one, Northeastern and now Grand Valley. Is there more before that? Yeah. You know, we went, I went to, yeah, there is. I went to Syracuse University and then I, um, I started out my career there working in higher education, working with young people who are returning to school, living at the poverty level, needed a lot of help and support. And then I uh, went into financial aid and then out to Michigan um, in my first sort of multi-unit responsibility, did my PhD at Michigan State, came back to the East Coast, worked at Pace, Fairleigh Dickinson, and then Northeastern for 18 years. So yeah, I've had a long career in higher education and um, you know, just progressive in leadership, which has been great. It's been a joy and um, you know, keeps me energized. It's a, it's a great field to be in, uh, making a difference in people's lives. So 2019, uh, you show up in uh, Allendale, correct? Yeah, Allendale and Grand Rapids. Because Allendale, we, Grand Rapids. Because you have two campuses, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, listen, my brother will not shut up about <laughs> Grand Valley State University. Uh, I co-teach with a woman who's a grad uh, from the '90s, and she, you know, she's from the from Michigan, and she, they talk about how unbelievable the facilities are. Um, most of the athletic facilities are in Allendale, cor Allendale correct? Right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. We were not going to, if we were going to put bring wrestling back, we weren't doing it to be um, at the middle of the pack. We wanted to do it and do it right. And that was one of my conditions as I spoke to the wrestling community and the donors is if we're going to do it, you know, we're going to bring it back in Grand Valley style, which has been at the top of the D2 programs across our sports for a long time. So it is amazing that we have incredible facilities good support, great support for the program. Um, you know, part of it is like, does your athletic department make a great game day experience, you know? And um, do the websites keep current? And does the facility work? And do they have the right nutritional pieces? So we wanted to put the whole package together to be a highly competitive program. So you bring the men's back first this year. You have two of the 10, of the 10 weight classes. You have 20% of the guys are all Americans. You have two really good guys who don't, you know, you have four qualifiers out of 10. Uh, you know, you take, I think, 14th, 13th or 14th in the country. Uh, D2, the, the most rapidly growing, as you and I know. Uh, D1 is always retracting, right? They're losing programs. And uh, I, I feel like the future of wrestling in college will be NCAA Division II, Division III, NAIA. Um, why go there and, and, and put both? on, on the, the docket to become programs with men's and women's uh, wrestling at Grand Valley State. Why do both? So let me, if I can, I'm going to tell you a little bit of a, the origin story of kind of coming to the university as president and um, finding myself thinking about the sport that I very much love and would love to see. But so I was, I was a new president and probably in the first, I got to say it was the first three months up, I got a letter from John Harris, who is, um, we have named the facility. Uh, he's our lead donor to bring back wrestling, John and Diane, uh, the family, amazing people uh, in recognition of their parents. But the letter basically said, not happy about Grand Valley having cut their wrestling program 30 years ago. Um, you know, want to do more for the school, but you know, here's, here's the history of Grand Valley wrestling. 
and you know want to talk to you about it so i said love to talk to you about it and we put a, a meeting together he came in with mike moyer who i'm sure you know the two of them were um they knew i had a wrestling history but they were doing kind of the powerpoint that you do when you trying to convince a university leader that wrestling can be good for the university and i was like, you know, and a lot of people they're putting on wrestling, it could be a great program to build your enrollment, you got students participating, like you said, um, D3, NAIA. Uh, but one of the things we talked a lot about was something I said before, Zeb, is if we're going to do it, we're going to do it, we're going to do it right, we're going to do it. Um, and actually, it was a little hard for me, because people, it's pretty easy to find my passion in wrestling, just Google my name, put wrestling or Google my kid's name, and you'll see you know, I used to run Mawa tournaments and do all sorts of things to try to give the kids in New England, coming from New Jersey, more space to compete because it, it was, you know, growing, it was lagging the growth in the, in the mid-Atlantic region. And so it was a little hard as a new president to bring your passion sport in. And so I said, you guys got to make this really compelling. You got to make it hard for me to say no, because the university is going to say, hey, you know, why, why this sport, you know, why not put more money in, in the existing programs or bring, there was two or three other sports on the docket. And, you know, and John Harris, you know, said, I'll be the first to step up and I'll lead the campaign to help you. And I said, and I commit, if we do this, we're doing it permanently and we're doing it right. And that's kind of how we shook on it and how it happened. And then we went out to dinner and we told a lot of good fun stories about our histories in wrestling. And, you know, um, they had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. My husband did like share in our past and our, our passion around the sport. So Vic's dad, Nick and Vic, Nick wrestled at Indiana, correct? Right. Okay. And then, uh, so it's Nick, Vic, and what's your oldest son? Vince. Vince. So Vince did not wrestle in D1 college because he went to a school that didn't offer it so he was in a similar situation to what josh kenny seth kenine and Bell were in right, right. and the set the, the josh kenny thing's unreal by the way josh <laughs> kenny was a junior college national champ up the road at muskegon right runner up in the club championship for grand valley and then he wins the d2 i don't think there's anybody that can compare credentials to josh kenny and he did it in your first year of existence, right? We know the men's team's going to be successful, right? You hired a ringer with Joey Simcoe, a guy with a great track record from Tiffin, yeah. uh, an All-American at, at, at uh, you know Finley, an Ohio guy. You bring him right up the road. But how is the girls' team under Coach Short going to be successful? Do you just hand that off to the athletic director? Or are you are you much involved like you were in the creation of the programs? Well, you know, I try to calibrate right. So, you know, and, and visit all the sports and, and, you know, be fair and equitable across them all. But I, I like to show up at anybody gets to nationals. I like to be present. I like to be showing up at home matches and meets and courts. Um, so I try to do that. But I have to tell you, our AD, Carrie Becker, who didn't know the sport well, she has absolutely fallen in love with the sport. She was sitting right to my left as Josh pinned in the finals. I mean, uh, she was there. She was there for the three days in Wichita. Um, she's psyched to see what we can bring in Indiana next year. And so I have every confidence that she'll continue to build the program. In terms of the women, I think Jake Short's a, a first-class coach. Um, his recruiting has been um, just absolutely stellar. It seems like every time I walk into the facility, which I love to show people the facility, um, and uh, or show up at one of the men's uh, meets that um, there's a woman there that's a recruit and she's walking through and there or she's on the mat. I think it's going to be an incredibly strong program. How do you what do you say to uh, presidents, other presidents, other administrators, other athletic directors? What do you say to them if they want to start the sport of wrestling and 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 how do they bring this sport in, in in grand fashion, in Grand Valley fashion, as you said. How do they bring the sport of wrestling back and or to their university or college? Yeah, it's it's a great question. I mean, I think I almost think it's not intuitive 
and let uh, for a president to sit and think, well, how, particularly in these times where the demographics are declining, where uh, many universities are struggling financially, we happen to be in, a, you said we're the fourth largest, we'll probably pretty soon be the third largest. We're growing, uh, we're diversifying, you know, we're doing some really exciting things. But what I think is that um, there's got to be an advocate inside, you know, inside the university. And, um, and the support of folks like yourself or Mike Moyer and others to really build the case and then um, do it in a way that it really speaks to the goals of the university. So I kind of going to reverse it because I don't think I, I'd, I'd be less than honest if I'd say, you know, you're going to meet a lot of presidents coming in and going, well, I, I want to broaden my sports today. Uh, I, I want to um, add wrestling, which is a, not necessarily a revenue sport. Um, doesn't necessarily have the highest visibility, but those of us close to it know it's an incredible builder of character. It's building discipline. It's a great experience. You know, I couldn't be a bigger fan, but um, I think you got to have advocates inside and you got to build the case around what the what's important to the institution. What's important to me was to do it, do it right. What's important to me is I never want to bring it back and then have it lose traction. So we had to be sure it was solid, um, not for just a few years, but over the life of the institution, um, finding the right coaches, building the right facility. Uh, it all made sense for us. And it has been a win. And I have to tell you, every coach has been at those matches uh, that I, I see the football coaches, all of them. I see the basketball coach. I see the women's basketball coach. They're all there in support in the program because we did it to say we're about athletics and academics and the great blend it can be. And wrestling is a really critical part of it. So that's who we are. Another institution may need, you know, 40 more men and 40 more women to build to, to make their campus more vibrant. And so I think you just got to really speak to what the what is the interest of that university. With over 20,000 students, undergraduate students at Grand Valley State University, you really don't need to push the enrollment-based model. Lake Erie College needs it. Certainly, Notre Dame College needed it. And these are two schools. I right. teach a mile from Lake Erie College. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I live 25 minutes from Notre Dame College, which they're closing the doors, right? Uh, you are very much so an outlier uh, in the sense of NCAA Division II athletics as a whole, Right. How uh, do you so successfully keep your athletic programs in their lane, right? So, you know, I'm a Kent State grad. Everything I have is because Kent State, I have a nephew who's a three-time All-American at Kent State. I got a nephew running track at Kent State. I love Kent State. I met my wife at Kent State, right? It's, but they're in the Mid-American Conference. So I just look at the three schools, right, that are in Michigan, right down the road. From you. you got Central Michigan. You have Western Michigan, which would be the closest one to you. And then you have Eastern Michigan. They're in the Mid-American Conference. And I can tell you that Kent State moves mountains to stay in Division I athletics and in the Mid-American Conference because football's the mandated sport. They got to buy almost 100,000 tickets every year by the Blue and Gold Club. It's insane. How has Grand Valley so successfully stayed in their lane when you, are, you look like a Mid-American Conference school? <laughs> Very much so. You're bigger than them, actually. Um, but you stayed in your lane. How did you keep your your university in its lane, how you have it athletically and, and culturally? Yeah, what a great question. Um, I, I think it's, you know, it's we really do believe in the total athlete experience. And we believe that the range of sports are really important to us. Football is a big program. We love our football. It's very competitive. We won four national championships, won the the GLIAC the last two years came very close, but we have great participation across all of our sports. We have families coming out, we have tailgates, we have, you know, it's just a part of the ethos on who we are. We're, we're, and we would rather sort of be where, be who we are and invest in it well and be sure that each program gets the kind of attention that it requires than to jump up and start making choices. Now, you know, never say never. You never know, you know, what's what what an institution's direction might be as we as you go forward, particularly as we get to be larger, 
uh, more complex, but we do know that full and fulsome athletic participation across the board is really important to who we are. We got a huge club sports program as too. You commented that Josh Kenny was in that. Uh, you know, we just won uh, the national cheer competition, the national dance at a high level of club participation. So um, our students, and there's, you know, almost 23,000 of them are participating in a high level and it just energizes the campus. It's, a, it's an amazing, it's an amazing space. I'm really not going to ask you to comment on this. I'm just going to put it out there. <laughs> Mercyhurst, um, as you know, just uh, transitioned over to Division One athletics and all sports. Um, I'm not. I'm not a fan of that because, I, as you know, I'm a fan of the D two model. Um, I was a D one guy who should have been a D two guy, right? Uh, <laughs> but you know, I look at it and I just don't like that because it's. I, I look at what happened in Notre Dame College, and it's almost like this cautionary tale. I hope you didn't just basically say you guys are eventually going to join the Mid-American Conference. Hopefully that's not what just happened. But no. I, I like the lane you're in. Do you like yeah. the lane you're in? Because there's there's Division One blood in the Mantella and the, the Avery's veins. <laughs> bursting through your veins, right? Your brother's an NCAA finalist. Your kid, you're your baby. He's an All-American. Yes. It's unbelievable, right? So you've got D1 blood running through the Mantella, Avery veins. But do you like the lane you're in? I love the lane I'm in. I and I I think that institutions too frequent look, look, let me tell you one thing. You know, when I was senior vice president at Northeastern University, uh, we closed the football program there. Uh 70 years the program had gone had had been in existence, but it never could really resource it fully. It was an urban campus without a stadium, and it put young people in a position, in my view, that it was hard to compete against other programs, right? And so uh, the institution made a tough decision to close the program and infuse the other sports uh, so that everybody was brought to full scholarship, stayed Division One. Hockey's now doing extremely well. You know, some of the other sports are really doing some exciting things. So I also really know what it takes to, to be highly competitive in D1. So to step into D1 because it's a brand builder doesn't make any sense from my perspective. Um, and so I'm very comfortable with the lane. And if there was ever another lane to be contemplated, it'd be because we could step into the top of the space, not to just sort of eke our way in, just call ourselves a new division. That's just the way... The way you can probably hear it in my voice, I'm a competitor. I enjoy um, being at the top, you know, and competing. Like I said, you know, we're may we're maybe the fourth largest in Michigan. We'll be uh, I'll bet in fall twenty four we'll be the uh, third largest in Michigan. So that's the way I'm built. But um, so I really think that it's really important to know your lane to know what it takes to excel in that lane. And we're nowhere near right now a position to move into, into division one. How, how long are you signed through? How long are you contractually uh, obligated to be the president of GVSU? Um, how much longer will you be? How long are you? Tell me no tough questions and I'm getting <laughs> D1, D2. How long am I president? <laughs> well, you just signed a, you signed a contract, didn't you? Yeah, I signed. I, I'm here for I came in 19. I finished my first five years in 24, summer of 24. And I have signed to to another five years. I did that about a year and a half ago. They asked me to re-up for another five years. I think that's actually the best question, because that means you're doing pretty good at your job. Uh, mom question. Mom. Que this is me to you. There's no take the administrator hat off, please. Okay. Hey, okay, I'm battling right now. I got a six and an eight year old. Right. And they're, they love basketball, they love <laughs> all sports, right? And wrestling, as you know, and you've been seeing since you were a little girl, it's really hard. It's super hard. Eating a cross face or an elbow or a knee and getting pinned and someone ripping your shoulder. I just, you know, it's a tough sport, man. Dr. Mantella, how can I get my kids to wrestle? How do I, how do I generate love and interest in the sport of wrestling? What, what's your advice to me as a mother? And as a, as a wrestling mom, right, a wrestling sister, right, how do I get my kids to be interested in the sport of wrestling? 
So, uh, I, gosh, I don't know if I have great advice. I can just tell you that, you know what, you know, Vic, who you commented on a couple of times, was uh, it did really successful D1 kid. And I have to tell you, there was times I can remember when he was in ninth grade saying, is this kid ever going to, he wrestled, but he, he didn't have his whole heart and soul in it. And I think it was more because everybody around him wrestled, you know, but then he saw his brother, you know, win a state championship in the final seconds, win New England's. And it, it was like a switch, you know, turned in that kid's head and he started running to school every morning and he just wanted to be a competitive wrestler and he never looked back. And so you never know what's going to turn your kids on because I would have never predicted that for Vic. And um, and yet, you know, he just went on, killed it. And um, as a as an, an athlete that trained and conditioned um, was amazing. Um, Nick also a gifted wrestler. Um, he just he just was a Nick is still to this day incredible natural natural athlete and um, has an incredible program in Metro West United is a teacher. He's been an assistant AD now he's an administrator at a university and he's his passion is just keep building the sport of wrestling. He knows hell of a lot in terms of teaching it and instructing it. And so my kids not only fell in love with it as the sport they were going to compete, it's very much in their life. And now my oldest is teaching, you know, coaching middle school wrestling for his uh, middle son. And, um, and so it just, it's expose it to expose them to them, but get it, give them a little bit of space where they can kind of figure out, if it's for them, it's, it, it's obviously, it is, it is a tough sport, you know, um, with a lot of there's, there's days that, you know, it really, those kids carried a lot of pain at times from the losses and stuff. So it's hard, it's hard for parents to watch, but you also watch them build up the character and build up the energy and the well being and the tenacity, you know, to come back after, a, a tough loss. So, you know, I, I love the sport and I'm glad my kids did it. And I hope that my grandkids do it, including the girls, by the way. Um, so how many grandchildren? Well, I have five and then my oldest son is getting remarried to a woman who has two boys. So I count it as seven. And there's a lot of wrestlers in that group right now. They're all young, but they're, they're all playing at, at wrestling. Do you get to go and watch your grandkids do anything? Because you're 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 running this massive university, and you're you know to, to schedule me into this and in, just getting into your it's hard because you're you're yeah. so on the go and yeah. doing everything. Do you get to go watch any things like that? I wish I could see more, but but yeah, I try. I try to get out to each kid like every couple of months, and then um, you know try to time it around. I love to time it around to go in a, a tournament. I went to see the two boys of my oldest um wrestle in um a tournament and they're both nine and um and then when I caught a conference in Boston I went to Metro West United with my oldest and he was coaching the girls and his daughter was there I got to watch the practice and she's only five uh so it was like great fun it was where are where are all three boys where are they all located now so um, Nick, the middle one, is in New England still and running the club and working at UMass. And um, Vince is an attorney in um, New Jersey. So he stays in Jersey, not too far from where he grew up. And then Vic is in Richmond, Virginia. Vic, actually, I sent Vic, Vic a message and he said he texted you. He did. He told me I had to take this podcast interview. I love it. Um, so, so when when you you know you talk about these things, it's so awesome to hear about the sport of wrestling and how deep it is in your family. But like I said, when you have D D one blood run, you know flowing through your veins, your husband played football at Syracuse. Yes. Did he play football with Brian Heffernan? I remember that name, but what year would that have been? Do you so remember? Brian Heffernan is St. Edward's first state champion. He was also St. Edward's first team state champions. And then he would have graduated from high school in 78. Yeah, that's probably then. So they probably Bob, overlapped a year or two. Yeah, it would have been a year. It would have been a year. Bob was uh, older than him. He graduated high school in 74. Oh, so your husband's 
So he's substantial. Okay, he's a little bit yeah. older than Brian Howard. Yeah, yeah. But he but probably have been at the end of Bob's career. Gotcha. Hey, when we first came on, I lied to you and told you I needed 15 or 20 minutes of your time. We're way over that. Um, I know you got a lot going yeah, on. Yeah. Is there anything else you've got for me about the women's program, the men's program at Grand Valley State University? Is there anything else you could tell me that you want to share about the sport of wrestling and your journey as maybe a sister, a mom, an administrator, a, a teacher, <laughs> a professor, everything you've done, you've worn so many hats in your life. Is there anything else you'd like to share, Dr. Um, and yeah, talk? Yeah, I would just tell you to watch Grand Valley Wrestling this next year. We got a lot of the men coming back. The women are going to hit the ground really running. Um, come out to the D2 Championship. You'll see us there. We uh, we intend to be there in force. It should be a it should be a great journey watching this program not only come back but come back um, in a blue ribbon type fashion. So uh, thanks thanks for giving me the the time as well and uh, the opportunity to relive a little bit of the life I don't get to relive as often. Was it anchors up? Is that the is that what this is? Is that the is oh. that Anchors up, right? Okay, I love it. Very Anchor good. Up. Anchor up. Yeah. Anchor up. Um, I actually just ordered my hoodies. I just ordered some hoodies from the. Uh, oh, good. Uh, I'll be wearing those with pride, and you know, obviously, you know, I'll be hopefully in Indianapolis next year for the championships. If you know, Wyatt's health holds up and he is able to be durable He's and be American happen. again and challenge, I'm excited, Doctor Mantella. Thank you for the time. I appreciate you. And stick around for a little bit if you can, please. Okay, thanks. Take care now.